Hello, everyone, and welcome to MSK Unknown Case Series number 34. Here we have a frontal view of the pelvis on the left side and a lateral view of the left hip on the right side of the screen. And of course, we have contrast of pacifying the bladder, but that's not the concern here. What I want to point your attention to is this lesion here in the left proximal femur. We see it right here. And on the lateral view, we see this area right here that uh, is an abnormality. And the question that I have for you guys is, what's the most likely diagnosis here? Is this a case of an osteosarcoma, a giant cell tumor, a chondroblastoma, or a liposclerosing myxoid fibrous tumor? And if we take a look at this lesion here, first of all, it's a heterogeneous lesion with areas of lucency and sclerosis. It's along the intertrochanteric region of the left femur. It has sclerotic margins. It has a narrow zone of transition, right? We can literally take a pencil and outline the outlines of this lesion, okay? And there's no aggressive periosteal reaction here, no associated soft tissue mass, no pathologic fracture, no cortical destruction or erosion. So of course, the most likely diagnosis here is none other than a liposclerosing myxofibrous tumor. This is not an osteosarcoma because we don't see any aggressive features here. We don't have cortical destruction, no soft tissue mass. Uh, there's sclerotic margins here, a very narrow zone of transition. A giant cell tumor would typically involve the metaphysis, may extend to the epiphysis of a long bone. You certainly wouldn't expect sclerotic margins within a giant cell tumor. A chondroblastoma is typically seen in the pediatric population, sometimes with chondroid rings and arcs, matrix mineralization. That also can be in the metaphysis of a long bone, typically extends to the epiphysis or may just strictly being the epiphysis. This doesn't have the same appearance of a, as a chondroblastoma. So the best diagnosis in this case is a liposclerosing myxofibrous tumor. Now the differential for this really is, I would consider three major entities for this type of lesion. When you have a mixed, bubbly, lucid and sclerotic lesion, one of which is an intraosseous lipoma. That may be the first thing that you think about when you see this type of lesion. When you have an intraosseous lipoma, Sometimes you can have sclerosis when, it, when it's involuting. It can develop fat necrosis. You sometimes have calcification associated with that lesion. It's really well marginated. Maybe a nice look for an intraosseous lipoma. Fibrous dysplasia would be a consideration if you felt that this was ground glass matrix mineralization. Uh, you wouldn't expect there to be sclerotic margins here, though, but you know, certainly you could have uh, you know, ground glass matrix mineralization, you know, a heterogeneous area of lucency and sclerosis and fibrous dysplasia. But the best answer here is, of course, a liposclerosing myxofibrous tumor because of the reasons that we discussed. And this is really a benign lesion composed of various elements, just like its name implies, lipo for fat, sclerosing for sclerosis, myxo for myxoid tissue, and fibrous for fibrous elements. So that's what gives the appearance of multiple areas of lucency and sclerosis around this lesion. The key feature of this though is the location, right? 85% of these occur in the femur, particularly in the intertrochanteric region. So when you see this type of lesion in the intertrochanteric region, you should often suggest that maybe it could be a liposclerosing myxofibrous tumor. If you see this somewhere else in the body, probably much less likely to be a LSMFT or a liposclerosing myxofibrous tumor. But the fact that it's in the intertrochanteric region, you always want to include this type of lesion in your differential when you see a mixed lucent and sclerotic lesion. It's typically heterogeneous, as we discussed, with areas of lucency, sclerosis, calcification, maybe some fat in there as well. The fat doesn't predominate, but sometimes you can have small amounts of fat in this lesion, in this LSMFT. It's often very geographic, narrow zone of transition with sclerotic margins, as you saw in the index case that I showed you. And this often presents as an incidental finding. In some patients, it can have, there can be pain, and that can be the inciting feature. But often we see this as an incidental finding for other reasons why the patient gets imaged. And an important thing that some people have talked about is that there is a low risk of malignant degeneration in some studies. Now, some radiologists feel that there's no risk of malignant degeneration. And there are some authors that feel that there's 10 to even 16% chance of malignant degeneration, particularly if there's pain or you know, there's a soft tissue component to this. So typically, you know, if there's no pain whatsoever, you know, these can be watched, but often if there is pain, patients may benefit from getting periodic MRI studies for this type of lesion. But again, that's very controversial, but most people consider this to be a benign lesion with maybe some potential of malignant degeneration. Thank you so much for your attention. Tune in next week for another high yield MSK unknown case.